Welcome. Today we continue our journey to infinity with the geometric distribution. Last time we defined the geometric distribution as a number of unsuccessful Bernoulli trials before we get the first successful trial. Today we ask ourselves question what is the probability of each value in this distribution? Earliest we can get a success in this experiment is the first coin toss. So the lowest possible number of failures is zero. The probability that we get success immediately is the same as probability of success in one trial, which is P. For us to have one unsuccessful trial, two events need to happen together. That we don't succeed in the first trial, but we do in the second. Since these events are independent, the probability of them occurring together is the same as product of probabilities. Probability that we succeed in the second trial is P. And probability that we don't succeed in the first trial is 1 minus P or Q. For the result to be equal to 2, we need to succeed in the third trial, which also has probability P times probability of failing in previous two trials, so Q to the power of 2. We can carry on this logic further and we can write the general formula for probability of getting any natural number k. It will be equal to probability of one success p times the probability of k failures, so q to the power k. To understand better the role of independence in this calculation, think about roulette players. Sometimes, when they are betting on the red result, the outcome is black many times in a row. They tend to think that the probability of the next one being red is higher, because you can't have that many blacks in a row. But they make error by forgetting that the each draw is independent. For us, that means that no matter how many times we failed, the probability of success in the next trial is always P. Ok, just like we did with binomial distribution, let's see if the calculated probability result makes sense by checking if the sum of all possible events is equal to 1. Theoretically, the result could be any natural number k, so we are summing the probability of all values from 0 to infinity. So let's substitute for the formula that we calculated. Since p is in every possible result, we can take it out of the sum. What we have left in the sum is so-called geometric series. So a series where each element is the previous one times the constant ratio, which in our case is equal to Q. This is why the distribution itself is called geometric. We know how much this sum is. At school, they told me, and probably you too, to use this formula. What they did not tell me is why this formula is true. But it's actually very simple. Let's just multiply both sides by 1 minus Q. Now, let's split the first term and multiply the sum by 1 and Q respectively. We see that elements from the first brackets and the second brackets cancel out. 
and what we are left with is 1, which is equal to the right hand side. Of course, this is only true for q strictly smaller than 1. If q was equal to 1, then this sum would simply be infinity, and we would say that our series is divergent. But here q is the probability of failure in a single trial. So we just need to exclude the case when q is equal to 1 and p is equal to 0. So let's now substitute for the sum in our probability. 1 minus q is the same as p, which cancels out and we are left with 1. We are happy. The sum of probabilities of all possible events is equal to 1. Let us calculate one more thing. What is the probability of succeeding at most after n trials? Well, this is the same as 1 minus probability of not succeeding after n trials. And this is something similar to what we already calculated. The only difference is that here the first element is q to the power of n plus 1. If we take it out of the sum, what we are left with is exactly what we calculated before, and it's equal to 1. So the probability that we will succeed after the first n coin tosses is 1 minus q to the power of n plus 1. By the way, we also proved another formula that was given to me in school, but no one explained it. If we sum just the first n plus 1 elements of geometric series, we need to multiply the previous formula by 1 minus q to the power of n plus 1. If you don't believe me that we proved this formula, you can multiply both sides by 1 minus q and see what happens. Note that if n goes to infinity, then q to the power of n plus 1 becomes 0, and we end up with our first formula. Let's go back to our probability. This number here is known in probability as cumulative distribution function. Cumulative because it accumulates the probability of all events from 1 to n. We will talk about distribution functions in more detail when we look at continuous distribution. For now, notice how this number quickly converges to 1 when n goes to infinity. To be precise, the speed of convergence is exponential, as we have q to the power of n plus 1. I'm pretty sure you can't wait to see if we see the same result using simulation in R. We will do that in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Feel free to ask questions or share your thoughts in the comments section. See you in the next episode.